Hello everyone. Vanguard was the Royal Navy's long-awaited first Gacha UR. But why? What makes her UR worthy, beyond the whole last battleship thing? Because if you look solely at her stats, she's just kind of solid, if a bit heavy. The Bismarck's routinely get heat for being overweight, but Vanguard weighs more in almost every way. Bar tip, it's at a full load, who slightly edges her out. Her career's not doing her any favours, either being commissioned in peacetime and never firing her guns in anger once across her 14 year service life. However, there is much more to a warship, or any piece of military equipment for that matter, than the numbers you can put on a trading card. And that's where Vanguard shines. Because her reputation as a stopgap with old guns makes it easy to forget she was very advanced and built on top of wartime experience. Let's start with the most important part, fire control. One only needs to look at the exploits of Vice Admiral Willis Augustus Lee, or Duke of York's defeat of Scharnhorst, to see how valuable radar-based fire control had become, especially as ranges grew longer and it became much harder to accurately lead and hit shots when so much as half a degree could lead to a miss by a wide margin. In World War II, having better fire control to actually hit your shots was better than having the most powerful guns, though ideally you'd want both. Vanguard carried a pair of Type 274 fire control radars, successor to the 284s of the King George V, feeding into an analog fire control computer, the Mark 10 version of the Admiralty fire control table. On top of all this was four Type 275s providing fire control for her secondaries, 11 Type 262s, one for each main AA mount, a Type 960 early warning radar, a 293 air and surface search radar, and a 277 height finding radar. Vanguard's sensor suite was the most extensive of her era, only rivaled by the completed Jean Bart and the Iowas giving her world-class situational awareness and fire control. Long-range gunnery, be it for warships or regular snipers, is mostly about maths, and Vanguard is very good at that. Now that I've ruined your perception of snipers by revealing that they're huge nerds, let's talk guns. The reason Vanguard exists as she did. Famously, Vanguard is a modified Lion class design, built using leftover gun mounts from Courageous and Glorious following their carrier conversions, due to delays in the Lion class's 16-inch guns, and a desperate need to get new hulls in the water. That being said, these were modernised, more so than the other 15-inch armed ships. They still increased the maximum gun angle from 20 to 30 degrees, but also improved the protection and reworked the shell handling facilities to be more in line with the King George V class. On top of all that, they were the only British battleship turrets with remote power control, allowing them to automatically train to follow whatever target was being tracked. Elevation was still manual though. But we're not done yet, as the mountings were stiffened to handle superchargers, the largest possible propellant charge that the guns could safely handle. Usually it was modernised turrets or superchargers, but Vanguard could have both giving the old but gold guns some added range and punch, had she been issued them. The rest of her weaponry was also upgraded. The twin 5.25 inch dual purpose guns were of the modified RP-10 design, featuring full remote power control and an automatic fuse setter, freeing up space within the turrets, which I'm sure the crew is greatly appreciated. Her AA was also pretty substantial, a total of 73 of our Lord and Saviour 40mm Bofors, split across 10 sex double mounts across the superstructure and stern, a single twin stag on top of the B turret, and 11 single guns on the deck. No 20mm, but by this point they probably weren't all that useful to be honest. Vanguard's hydrodynamics were exceptional, and while that's somewhat damaging to our favourite Battle Weep's popularity, it's pretty good for her performance as a real life warship. For example, she had a standard displacement of around 45,000 tonnes, and could reach 30 knots with only 130,000 shaft horsepower. Compared to a South Dakota, who only reached 27.5 knots on the same power despite being almost 10,000 tonnes lighter. 
Her sea keeping was well regarded, able to keep an even keel in rough seas and was much drier than her predecessors, thanks to her redesign giving her a steeper bow. Why they thought the need to fire straight ahead at zero degrees elevation is beyond me. The NATO Operation Marina exercise was ultimate proof of this, where Vanguard handled significantly better than Iowa in the rough sea state. Don't get it twisted, this is probably the only situation where a Vanguard is better than an Iowa. Protection wise, Vanny largely follows the armour scheme of the King George V class. That is to say, it's pretty damn good, though some alterations were made. The waterline belt was shaved down to 14 inches over the magazines and 13 everywhere else in order to save weight, and extra splinter protection was added. Most of the protection improvements were focused on the underwater defence, reducing spaces that could flood, extending bulkheads to further subdivide the ship, and increasing pumping capacity to keep the water out. Among all this were a few general improvements. She carried around a thousand tons more fuel oil than the King George V, with around 4,850 long tons of the stuff, and came with a new high pressure for sprayers and burners by default, allowing her to maintain efficiency in spite of the poor quality fuel that the Royal Navy had been forced to switch to. This also helped the torpedo protection, as alluded to just. Her electrical power was also greater. With a total of 3,720 kilowatts, she had the largest power output of any British battleship, but that was necessary to feed all her radars and upgraded systems. Royal Navy battleships were largely hydraulic, so it still paled in comparison to, say, an Iowa, which was almost all electric. As flagship, Vanguard also featured an action information centre, as on US BBs, as well as an equipment to better condition the ship for operations in the Arctic or hotter climates. So that's Vanguard. Given her status as the last battleship ever built, and her cutting edge design, it's easy to see why she was chosen to be a UR despite being only good stat wise and her rep as a stopgap. Turns out the stopgap was pretty good. Britain's best battleship, in fact. I hope this video helped illustrate that. I understand she doesn't turn heads as much as the usual UR beat sticks, but I think that's worked out in her favour. She stuck around more than her contemporaries, thanks to her more support focused kit, and I hope it'll be a while before URBBs get so strong that three of them is better than two plus Vanguard and her buffs. But for now, as long as strong BBs keep getting released, and they will, you'll take your UR Battleship headliner for CN Anniversary and you'll be fucking pleased. She'll be there to make them hit even harder. So, until next time, fair winds and following seas.